We're dealing with the pertinent issues of life. Life. Say life. life. There's no need of running from the issues of life. If there's a problem, face it. I've always done that, even as a child. If there was a problem, hit it. Don't run from it. If you've got three problems, hit the hardest one first. The other two are easy after that. Don't hit the, don't hit the little one first. The big one might get you down. And so if you deal with the issues of life, there's victory in Jesus. The church needs to know how to cope with the issues of modern life. How you can bless humans and how you can lift them up and how you can bring them into a place of self-realization that God is real and that eternity is real and heaven is real. Can you say amen? amen? Today's lesson, how to cope with disappointment. Uh, disappointment is when you, 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 you get the two ends about ready to meet and somebody moves the end. That's a disappointment. You didn't make the appointment. Somebody dislodged it. I have discovered uh, it's not what happens to us in life. It's how we react to what happens to us in life. That, that is in relation to disappointment. Uh, what would make you disappointed would not make this one disappointed. Now, you've got to know that. The whole world's not disappointed because you are. Ain't that a shame? You wish they were. You said, come on, everybody, let's get under the cloud. No, no, the sun's shining. You want to get under a cloud. And so what disappoints you doesn't disappoint others. If you realize that, it'll get a little smaller at that point. The same identical thing can happen, and one goes up and one goes down. So it is not what happens to you. It's your reactors inside of you that makes all the difference of what disappointment is all about. In our, in our reading here in Luke 24 and, and uh, 21, it says, We trusted that it had been He which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Disappointment. This was religious disappointment. <laughs> There's disappointment in business. Lots of it. How many found that out already? There's disappointment in ball games. You know, have you ever noticed that a ball game, they don't ever put the cameras on the, game, on the group that lost? How many have noticed that? I didn't think you had. When they have these lotteries, have you ever noticed they don't ever put the cameras on the fellow that didn't win anything? Are you here or not? Amen. Disappointment at the ball game. A thousand times, parents shouldn't even say it. I'm disappointed in you, talking to your kids. Well, they're disappointed in you too, so let's. <laughs> a little boy was eating too fast. The father said, you're a little pig. The little boy looked up and grinned and said, you know what a little pig is? He said, what? He said, it's the son of a hog. There are times when hope fails. Broken promises bring strong reactions inside of us. Aspirations become broken. The problem is some folks can't handle it. When life fails to satisfy all expectations within you, and there are many reasons and causes for disappointment and sadness of soul and broken dreams, what do you do at that point? What do you... Every human being has them. If you think that others are moving along smoother, but you're not, you're wrong. Every human being has his share. What we want to teach you is how do you handle disappointment? Your first point there says, what causes disappointment? Some are disappointed in love. Some young man wants to marry a young lady and she don't see the qualities in him she's looking for. He goes around with a long face like a mule. You ought to have a little song. For every Jack, there is a Jill. She may not be as pretty as I will. And I'm not a singer. <laughs> but there are many things that can bring disappointment to your life. How are you going to handle them? Strength is handling life's problems. 
Victory is handling the things that come into your life. I have things to hit, have had things to hit me that even the devil says you won't make it now. When I had five men killed in an airplane accident that were all my television crew, and my whole television team wiped out in a moment of time, the devil says you'll never raise your head again. I said, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. I'll be stronger than ever before. I've got loved ones and friends over there that I didn't have there before. And if God saw, God saw that in his eternal wisdom that he wanted them there a little before I get there, that's all right with me. I'll find it all out when I get over there. You've got to handle disappointment. And if you don't handle it well, it'll kill you. It'll destroy you. It'll make your life to be marred. And it, it has no reason to be. And it could send you to an insane asylum to spend your days sitting in a corner wondering what it's all about. You don't have to live that way. God gives us strength and God gives us power to overcome every disappointment that man can hand to us. Are you here or not? Amen. And God doesn't hand out disappointments. That's a devil's business. There's so many reasons why disappointment can come and tell you the list would be a mile long. When you think of betrayal, that you put your trust in someone and then, it, and then, it, and then they turned out not to care for you. Every one of you suffered that type of thing. You just put too much confidence in a person and they, they let you down. Don't think you're in there all by yourself. Jesus was in there too. Remember, Judas was there. He had been trusted, he had been loved, and he didn't appreciate it. Anyway, there are so many human causes. Let's look into some of the forms of disappointment that will help you. One is unnecessary disappointment. Sometimes disappointment comes and it shouldn't have come. There was no rhyme or reason for it coming. When a person willfully neglects or abuses a known law of life, he suffers unnecessarily for it. For example, in eating unwisely. It can result in ill health. He gets all down because he's sick. Well, he's sick because he didn't do what he should have done. Didn't eat what he should have eaten. Didn't eat the amount that he should have eaten. And so there are times when we have unnecessary disappointments to come our way. You drive a car too fast and you wreck it. You have a great sorrow because of it. Well, God didn't cause it. Your neighbors didn't cause it. It was your right foot. Don't cut off your foot. Work up a little higher than that. Not only can it be eating unwisely, it can be speaking unwisely. And it can result in a poor mental health. You get negative, and you won't be happy. No negative person in the world is happy. But you just let a negative thinking come into your life and negative talking coming into your life, there'll be disappointments. People that you want to love you won't care for you. And, and you'll just find that life has one bump after another. And they're not necessary. I mean, <laughs> you had to hold the wheel, why didn't you handle it right? Like I told one lady, I said, I've done all I'm going to do, now you hold the reins. Now you do the driving now. You come here here for me to drive for you, and lead your life and guide your life. You take a hold of them now. And she said, yeah, I'll do that. I even wrote a book about it. You hold the reins. There comes a time when you have to be in charge. There comes a time when you have to accept the responsibility. There comes a time when you have to say, hey, God, I'm going to show you what a victorious life is and live it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. And so we find that disappointment is is uh, greatly related to things that we do. Look at Judas. Do you know Jesus would have forgiven him if he'd have asked for it? If he'd have said, I'm sorry, Lord, he'd have said, you're forgiven. But he didn't do that. He went out and he was so disappointed with himself that he hung himself. Now, he didn't, God didn't tell him to do that. Jesus sure didn't tell him to do that. The devil. You know, you can do what the devil wants you to do, and then he pushes you further. Uh, he can cause you to go and, uh, and become an alcoholic. And then he said, now, now take your life. Nobody loves you. And he caused both of them. When we're going to wake up to the tricks of the devil and know that he's the one that brings this appointment to human lives, and it's Jesus that brings the appointments. Appointment with health, appointment with joy, appointment with, with everlasting life. It's better to live for Jesus. Can you say Amen. Uh, you, you look on your page 22 at David. His sin brought about the death of his son in 2 Samuel 
uh, 12 and 15, And Nathanael departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and, and it was very sick. And David brought forth, and, and David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted, went in, and lay all night upon the earth. You know, you break the laws of God, and you lay around on the earth and scream and cry all you want to, it's not going to change anything. Are you still here? You reap what you sow in this world. And, and you're screaming about it, don't change it any. The elders of his house arose and went, went to him and to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread. And it came to pass on the seventh day, seven days of fasting and praying, that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, uh, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How would it be, how, how will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? Vex himself. You see, that's real deep disappointment. When David saw that the, his servant whispered, he perceived that the child was dead. Uh, therefore, David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. And so he, 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 he washed himself and, and became himself again. What a terrible disappointment he had, but it was because of adultery. If you think you can go and commit adultery and have no disappointments, you're wrong. Are you here or not? There are, there are disappointments that come into people's life. You have nobody to blame but yourself. You say, what in the world can I do? Well, do like David did. Get out and pray about it, yeah? You'll, you'll still get the judgment. Of course you will. You know, you know, some people think they can live anywhere they want to and just run to church and say, Lord, forgive me, and the whole thing's gone. Well, that isn't true. The prodigal son wandered away from home. He came back. The father forgave him. He gave him a feast. He gave him a ring. He gave him a, a coat. He walked out the door and told the older son, everything I've got yours. You hear? <laughs> you didn't read that part, did you? Being a prodigal was a loser. He told that older son, everything I've got is yours. Yes, that God forgave Samson. Is that your next one there? Yeah. God forgave him? Sure, God forgave him. He let his hair grow and his strength came back. Are you here? Never got his eyes back. His problem was women. They took good care of him. They poked out his eyes. Never saw a girl again. Oh, yes, God forgave him. Never gave him his eyes back. If you transgress against God, you're a permanent loser. You better know it before you get into it. Has nothing to do with forgiveness. God will forgive you. As I often say here, you, a kid can drive a motorcycle 75 and 80 miles an hour down a highway and wrap it around a telephone post. The good physician will sew him up, but he'll carry those scars the days of his life. I mean, I've heard of old Captain Hook that has the TV show. Heard of Captain Hook? He was offered some wine by some preachers, by the way. And he almost cried, and he, he lifted up his, his, his arm that has, uh, it's a wooden arm. He said, I, I don't want any of that. I've got a wooden arm because of that stuff. Then he hit his wooden leg with his fist. You know, when you hit a wooden leg, it's not like hitting your, 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 your live leg, you know. You can hear it all over the room, wum, wum, wum. He hit his wooden leg and says, this wooden leg is because of that. Yeah, God had forgiven the captain, except he's still wearing a wooden leg. Are you here? Amen. All right. So disappointment sometimes has to do with your own self. Don't be blaming it on neighbors and friends and God and others. Samson is a, is a direct relation there in that he didn't obey God, he didn't walk in God, and that he, he suffered for it. All right. Uh, you're uh, number 22 there, Page, all of you friends. And then it's point number three. Unfounded disappointment. This is interesting. Some disappointments are actually unfounded. You're, you're sad, but the thing you believe in didn't happen. I'm all sad she don't love me. She just loves you to death. Wish you'd get over there and get some of it. Are you here or not? Well, what kind of congregation I got this one? <laughs> Let me give you some illustrations of it. The disciples thought Jesus was dead. That was in our reading we gave you a while ago. We, tried, we trusted that he'd be the one that would restore him. <laughs> he, he was talking to him. He was talking to him. The 
had a great big blanket of disappointment on top of him and couldn't even see out. A lot of disappointment is absolutely un unfounded. No relationship to reality. It's all in your emotions. The devil's lying to you. You don't have to believe the kind of stuff. Look at Mary and Martha. That's your B point. And, and, and Mary and Martha, they were whining and crying and talking about final resurrections. They didn't know about first ones or second ones. And they were looking straight in the eye of the resurrection and the life, saying, he's dead, he's dead. Looking right straight into life, saying, he's dead. Like some of you looking at a big table full of food and saying, I'm hungry, about to starve to death. Well, good gracious, sit down and eat. <laughs> Unfounded disappointment. They couldn't understand, they couldn't believe the truth, they couldn't accept that he was the resurrection, he is the resurrection. You see. At the empty tomb, Mary Magdalene searched for Jesus only to find out later that he was already gone. He wasn't even there anyway. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is, which is Lord, Lord, Lord. And, and he said, yeah, I'm alive, I'm alive. Verse 17, Jesus said unto her, touch me not. I am not yet ascended to my father. Go to my brother and say unto them, I am, I ascend to my father and your father and to my God and to your God. And so there was a, there was weeping and howling around that tomb and he wasn't in there. He was, he had risen from the dead. Unfounded disappointments. Elijah missed it too. In 1 Kings 19 and 18, he said, I am the only one left to witness for Jehovah. Sounds like some of, well, this. God rebuked him and says, say, boy, I got 7,000 left and every one of them is better than you. They're not sitting around whining. They're not sitting around saying, there ain't nobody left but me. When you get to feeling you're the only good person left, you better look around you. Yeah. God says, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Do you want to know that God knows more about his church than you do? God knows how many he's got. You don't. You count members and he counts born-againers. <laughs> Quite a difference. So Elijah was disappointed, but he was disappointed in a thing he had no relationship to. He didn't know anything about it. He had an unfounded disappointment. Now search your own life. See what you're disappointed about. It may not be real. Hey, you, 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 may be, you may have the devil's gloom on top of you, and it, and it shouldn't be there. In English history, the story is told of a large sign in the fog which read, Nelson defeated and the fog hit London and all England began to weep and a few hours later when that fog lifted it read Nelson has defeated the enemy they got the whole story so sometimes your disappointment is in relation to a half story you don't have all the full information on it yet and when you get the full information on it it's a different story I mean, I want your wife to give you the whole story now. Oh, I say, all right. <laughs> okay. Okay. The devil can destroy your life for disappointment, and, and then you wake up one day and say, well, it wasn't true. Well, don't believe it in the first place then. Shout the praises of God. There's victory in Jesus every step of the way to heaven. How many know that? Amen. So we unmask our fears in order that we might know truth and gladness. Your point number four is, Unavoidable disappointment. Now, we know there's that kind. You can't do anything about it. Disappointment sometimes comes as a result of a conflict between individuals. Oftentimes, as, as, as tensions. Sometimes these tensions have to do with standards of good and evil that you can't do anything about because your standard is there and you won't move it. And because it's there, then it causes a thing called disappointment. This kind of disappointment cannot be avoided. You, you cannot let down your morals just to please somebody. If they're disappointed, that's their problem. You, 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 you just can't afford to do it. Oh, they expect me to. You don't do what people expect you to do. Young girls today, when they get 14 or 15 and, and, and a boy hugs them up tight and, and, and says, hey, come on, let's have intercourse. And she says, no, I'm afraid. And he says, all oh, the girls are doing it. 
push him off to one side and says, hey, you've had a lot of experience, hadn't you? Because the only way you know all the girls are doing it, you've done it with all the girls. There's only one way to know it, you know, and you've done it. No other way to know it. Otherwise, it's all hearsay, and hearsay is sometimes total lies. And while you push him away, slap his jaws and tell him to go home and talk to his mama. He needs some more instructions. Is that all right? All right. We must stand up against adverse things and adverse winds and when they blow. We must know that Christ is our anchor. And that we, we, we are not like a listless boat on a sea. We're anchored to Christ. We're anchored to reality. And we're, we're anchored to happiness. I had a young man that told me in this, plat, in this, in this altar right here. He, he said, I have a beautiful wife. I have a lovely life. A wife, I have committed adultery about 10 times with different women, and it's the dirtiest, nastiest, messiest. He says, I could take my own life. I looked at him. He never said they enjoyed it at all. You see? Ringing with disappointment, ashamed of himself, and the devil messed him up and he didn't even enjoy even the memory of it, you see. The best life is to live for God. It has fewer disappointments than anything else. And then in those disappointments, you can walk on them. They're stair steps to something better. Just keep on walking upward. Can you say amen? amen? And so there are times when there's disappointment that there's nothing we can do about. We just stand it. Your point number five, there are such things as what we call unbearable. Our disappointments, humanly unbearable. But then we have, we have 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, like if a loved one dies or something. They have no temptation taken you, but that is common to man. But God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Say able to bear it. Able. Say able to bear it. Able. Say able to bear it. Able. Well, don't ever say you're not able then. Don't ever say you are not able. God says you are able. We must never succumb to disappointments. Never. We must triumph over them. Through Christ's strength and love and patience, we can do it. Romans 8, 28, which is your favorite, says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called, who are the called, according to His purpose. And so through Christ's strength, we're going to make it. What you say? Amen. We're going to make it. When we put Christ first with Christian ideals and realize that we live in an imperfect world, we can accept unavoidable disappointments. In Romans 5 and 3, it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Let it come. Knowing that tribulation works with patience. We take it as a part of our spiritual growth, and then they don't hurt you. Disappointments don't hurt those who accept them as part of their spiritual growth. Disappointment changes dramatically when only one letter is altered. And when you change the D to an H, it becomes his appointment. Are you here? When you change the D to an H, it becomes his appointment. And so you can take every D for dumbness or something and put an H in there for holiness and it becomes his appointment. And when it becomes his appointment, there is no disappointment. Can you say amen? amen? John Bunyan wrote that magnificent book, Pilgrim's Progress, in the Bedford Jail. He was there for 12 years. I've been down in that jail myself and sat down right there in the same spot where he wrote that book. His wife handed him food through the little window. They'd have starved him to death in there. He was put in there because he was a preacher. He didn't do anything wrong. He, re he refused to stop preaching and they put him in jail. And so while in jail, Dr. Samuel Rutherford, one of the greatest spiritual religious minds ever to live in the history of man, put on his stationery, God's house, Aberdeen. <laughs> if you're in the city of jail, would you like to make you up some stationery and name it God's house? Give them the address. Are you here? It's all according to how you take a thing. Madame Guyon wrote from prison, the Lord has shut me up, so I do nothing now but sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you funny people, I declare. 
Paul and Silas in jail sang at midnight and God delivered them. Acts 16, 25, and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Can you see now that disappointment really has to do with you and not with circumstances?